wasn't planning on doing a video this week, but when I got a question on my most viewed video on my channel, it's got more than twice as much views as my next closest video. I had a question on there about using the same technique that I used in the video for installing snake guides. And the video is about installing guides without using tape or glue or clamps or anything to hold the guide in place while you get your wrap started. And it gets a lot of views from a video that's on my channel, not for most YouTubers that are have big channels, but for mine, it gets a lot of views. And honestly, the way that video was shot and things, it's it's not one of my better videos and it's because I've gotten better over time. I thought it'd be a good time to revisit the topic of that video and I can do something a little higher quality that's a little easier to see, I think. I've gotten better with my recording and my video editing. At the time I recorded the original video, I had showed people how to make a cardboard box wrapping jig and I'll put a link to that up here in the info button if you look in the upper right hand corner the video that showed how to make the cardboard box rod wrapping jig was done to help people get into the hobby i had other wrapping jigs that i was using at the time that all predates the one that i now make and sell on ebay i thought if i could make a video showing people how to make a cardboard box wrapping jig that it would help get more people started in it inexpensively and they could go from there and invest in other tools and equipment if they liked what they were doing. So this was one of the projects that I did on that cardboard box wrapping jig. On the video I'm doing today, I'll be using one of my wrapping jigs that I make and sell myself. It's just easier to do anything on it. You can wrap a complete rod on a cardboard box. That doesn't mean it's an easy thing to do. So I'm gonna use my wrapping jig just to make things a little easier for me. I thought this would be a good time to address the same topic and maybe do an updated version somewhat of the same subject matter. What I'm doing in this video is I'm gonna show you how to use the same technique to install a snake guide. And this technique actually works really well for snake guides because they're so lightweight. The technique itself, it works fine on most guides until you start getting into the larger ones and then they're too heavy and they won't stay in place while you're trying to do this. But most micro guides and even smaller guides that aren't considered micro guides until you start getting into some larger ring sizes this technique works pretty well and it's probably not the most structurally sound way of wrapping a guide but for most freshwater applications it shouldn't cause you any problems i'm going to start this wrap the same way you would start any other wrap i'm just going to put several turns on the blank using the tag in of my thread And I'm going to wrap back over the top of that tag in for about three or four turns. And then I'm going to cut that tag end off. And that'll give us our start for our wrap. After you cut your tag end off, you're going to want to put as many turns now on the blank as you want to be in front of the guide after the guide has been installed. At this point, you're gonna put the guide up under the thread that's coming off of your wrapping jig, almost like you would do if you're inserting a pull-through loop. You're gonna pull it up under the thread and set it on top of the rod. That way there's some tension on that first wrap that's holding the guide to the blank. Then you're just gonna align the front end of the guide foot with the front end of the wrap that's already on your blank. Once you get that aligned, you're gonna put about 10 to 15 wraps over the foot and the blank. And once you get that 10 to 15 wraps on there, the guide's pretty well secured to the blank. Now we're just gonna very slowly and carefully back the guide up to where you're pulling the foot under the wraps you've already laid on top of it. You're gonna pull the point of the guide foot under those wraps you already have in place. Then just pack the threads back down towards the butt end of the blank to push them back and tighten them up with the taper of the blank just a little bit. And that will help close out that wrap around the tip of that guide foot. So you won't be able to see the guide foot underneath
then just continue your wrap as you normally would on the guide foot and i like to stop mine about 10 turns or so short and insert a pull loop at that point and then go ahead and put about 10 or so turns over my pull loop I like to cut my tag ends off really close. That way they pull completely under and there's nothing to trim off when I'm done. Then you just straighten up your ends and burnish as needed. Now pretty much everything is done that's needed to secure this guide to the blank. It's not going to move on you at this point unless you want it to move. So you can go ahead and wrap the other guide foot as you normally would. And again, when I insert my pull through loop, I like to put about 10 turns on it or so. And then I like to trim it really close, the tag in really close to the pull through loop. That way I pull the tag in completely under the threads. Nothing sticks out, there's nothing to trim. That's just the way I like to do it, but you definitely wanna play around with it and try different ways and, and come up with the way that you like the best. I just like not having to trim my tag ends once they're pulled through. It's just easier to me that way. So this technique works really well. It's really easy to do. The only problem you might have with it is getting the first one or two turns on after you put the guide under your wrap that you've already started because it kind of wants to move around just a little bit right at the very beginning the lighter the guide the less it does that and these snake guides don't move a whole lot when you're doing those that's why i say this technique's best suited for micro guides or smaller lightweight guides it just makes it a lot easier a bigger guide is heavier and it wants to move a lot more so I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions or anything, leave them in the comment section below. You can always email me, thefishinghobby at gmail.com. If you have anything you want to send, pictures or anything like that, of some work that you've been working on, I always like to see those things. I will talk to you guys later. Yeah.